The 3M Podcast is brought to you by Craftsman Home Inspections. If you need a home inspection for a real estate transaction in the Denver or Aurora, Colorado metro areas, find out more about Craftsman Home Inspections at CraftsmanColorado.com or call them directly at 720-593-0383. Hey everyone, welcome to the 3M Podcast with JN Wheels. I'm your host, Jeremiah Wheelersburg, and as always, if you're looking for a place to listen to the podcast, you can find us, just search The Minister, The Ministry, and Me Show, that's what the 3M Podcast stands for, so just search The Minister, The Ministry, and Me Show on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, YouTube, Or you can just go to jnwheels.com and there is a 3M podcast tab where you can find all of those links. And then if you want to follow me, you can follow me at jnwheels on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. So anyways, welcome you guys to season two of the 3M podcast. Um, This is the podcast where we talk about the minister being God. So we talk about God in the Bible. We, we talk about all things pertaining to life from a biblical worldview perspective. Um, and so we talk about the minister being God we, in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We talk about the ministry being how we serve God in our lives, in our families, in our workplaces, and in our local church. And then, of course, we talk about me. That's just uh, my excuse to just talk about whatever I want on the podcast. And so thank you guys for listening. We appreciate it so much. On the first, uh, I think three episodes of season two of the 3M show, we had Joel Wheelersberg and Ryan Ritchie Wilson. And we concluded our series on theology, our theology series talking um, about last season. We talked about, let's see, what did we talk about? We talked about natural theology biblical theology. Uh, We finished up talking about systematic theology, historical theology. And then we had a, uh, one of our most popular episodes was called the good, the bad, and the ugly of theology. And we talked about some of the reasons why people are scared of theology or why in some strange um, scenarios, why some pastors Um, discourage their churches and congregations from theology but we'll get more into that when we when we get into our later this season our uh, series called spiritual abuse and the wolves among us Um, and so today we're actually talking about um, racism prejudice and discrimination so I thought why don't I just um, throw a quick episode out there on this topic and uh, and just get it out there. What does the Bible say about these things? Because it is such a hot uh, button issue where people are up in arms over this right now. Um, And so I thought, well, let's just give a really quick, solid, um, easy to listen to, easy to understand episode just on what does the Bible say about these things, namely um, racism, prejudice, discrimination, and uh, another hot button issue out there, which Uh, we may talk about maybe on this episode or in the future is bullying because bullying not only goes on. When we think of bullying, we think about uh, little kids, right? (laughs) But there's, we think about our, like our, our middle school, high school days, right? I think in elementary school, there's not as much bullying going on, but it's still there. But we think back to whether we were bullies in middle school or high school. And if you were a bully, I hope you can be honest about that with yourself and just kind of repent of that and move on <laughs> and and no longer be a bully. Um, and then we think about maybe we were bullied in middle school or high school. And uh, so, you know, those are the, that topic is out there big time right now. And I think that's a good thing um, for us to, to really address those issues as a culture, as people, and then as Christians. Um, you know, those things shouldn't really exist in our lives and our churches. But um, again, it, coming up in our spiritual abuse in the wolves among us series, uh, we'll mention bullying also, because unfortunately, um, that does happen. And that's part of the spiritual abuse in churches where it does happen. Um, most of the time in spiritual abusive situations, subtly 
and even from the pastor's um, influence, uh, there can be bullying in spiritually abusive churches where um, these pastors are really trying to hold on to their authority and they'll do it at all costs, even if that means demeaning people, bullying people, looking down on people, insulting people. And uh, sometimes it happens straight in a straightforward manner. And then a lot of times it happens in a very passive aggressive way or in little ways, subtle ways over time. And it just builds up where those uh, spiritually abusive churches or pastors um, can really lord, as we're told not to do, but they can really lord their authority over people over time. And so it's very unfortunate. But anyways, today we are talking um, about racism, prejudice, discrimination um, and what the Bible says about that. And I think just opening up uh, my first thoughts on this topic are that um, when it comes to, to racism, there's really only the human race. So when we look at from God's perspective um, there's not a bunch of, of, of races out there. There are there are a lot of different ethnicities. So, you know, I have a, uh, a white guy dad and I've got a Spanish mother. And, uh, you know, so those are the dif- different ethnicities that make up sort of my background. And I say white guy because my dad was adopted and, and I'm not sure exactly what his uh, what his mixture is there. Um, but we're a pretty typical um, schmorkus board, um, you know, mixed family, American family. Um, but we are, that's our ethnicity. But as far as race is concerned in God's perspective, when he looks down on us, um, he sees the human race. He sees the, his creation. He sees what he has created, um, in human beings who he has created in his image. And so um, that's the human race. So there are a lot of different ethnicities on every different continent. Um, and especially here in America, we're made up of so many different ethnicities. Um, but uh, we all make up the human race. And, you know, we have a lot of the same things, the same characteristics. Um, when we look at one another, we see we see eyes and nose and ears. And we have a lot of those things in common. With just within our features, um, these things that make up our characteristics. And we're all created, like I said, in God's image. In Genesis, you can go to Genesis chapter 1, um, verse 26 through 27. And here God said in Genesis 1, 26, um, let's see here. I'm getting it. I'm getting it. I'm reading from the New King James Version. It says, and then God said, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. And so God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female, he created them. Yeah, so, and as Christians, so we see that God created all, all of us. Um, he didn't create, say that he created, um, you know, uh, people from Antarctica or people from America, people from the United States, people from Africa. He didn't create white people or black people or Asian people or Mexican people. Um, God created mankind or humankind and he did it in his own image. And he saw after he created these things that they were good. And so that's what God created when he created us And just thinking back on John chapter three, verse 16, you know, that God so loved the world, you know, praise the Lord that he didn't say, uh, you know, God so loved, um, you know, black people, God so loved white people, God so loved Asians and he didn't single that out. God loves the world. God loves his creation. And he's on a mission to save those whom he created in his own image. And he's doing that through Jesus Christ, which does go to say, just pop into my mind as I'm, I'm just expressing that. I think of Jesus Christ, you know, um, he wasn't Hollywood Jesus. He wasn't uh, Jim Caviezel. You know? <laughs> um, he was a legitimate, probably dark skinned man from the Middle East. Jesus Christ was a Middle Eastern Jew, and that's who God showed himself as 
in the flesh. And, and God, he doesn't show uh, partiality or favoritism. You know, we can look at a lot of different verses there. Uh, if we go to a, Ephesians chapter six, I'm, I'm turning there right now. So Ephesians chapter six, um, verse nine, it says this, it says, and you masters do the same thing to them, giving up threatening, knowing that your own master also is in heaven and there is no partiality with him. And so we see that God is not a partial God. He's not one that shows favoritism to any type of person because that's what he encourages us to do. That in the same way, when it comes to, let's say this topic of racism, that we are not to show favoritism or preference to any person because of what group they're from, what color of skin they are. God himself shows no partiality. And so we should not also in Romans chapter two, verse 11, it, it just flat out declares Romans two verse 11. It says, for there is no partiality with God. I don't know if you guys listen to this podcast with your Bibles in hand, but we're going to get, um, give you a lot of scriptures today on this episode, but Acts chapter 10 verse 34 uh, says this, it says, let's see here. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, in truth, I perceive that God shows no partiality. And that would be coming from a Jew. Peter being blown away by the fact that God was saying, Hey, I am welcoming all people into my house. Show no partiality also. And so neither should we. James uh, chapter two, it, it um, says that we shouldn't judge with, with evil, with evil thoughts. Yeah. In James chapter two, uh, in verse chapter two, it says, uh, for if there should come into your assembly, a man with gold rings in fine apparel, and there should also come in a poor man in filthy clothes. And you pay attention to the one wearing the fine clothes and say to him, you sit here in a good place. And you say to the poor man, you stand there or sit here at my footstool. Have you not shown partiality among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? And so here we have James saying, look, for you to be partial to one another, just because of a status or the way somebody looks, your thoughts are evil. And with that being said, we all struggle with evil thoughts. Let's, let's just be honest we all have those times when um, partiality or, or you know, forgive me for saying it, but a racism, racist thoughts come into our mind, whether it's because of our upbringing. Maybe you were born in white suburbia and uh, you're going to a coffee shop, a new coffee shop that just popped up in, uh, in the ghetto side of town or in the city and you're in a amongst a different culture, those are, and maybe some racist thoughts because it's out of your comfort zone pop into your mind. We should recognize some of those partial thoughts, those racial thoughts as evil thoughts like James would, James would tell us, and we should repent of those things. And so here's the thing. As Christians, we're called to recognize um, those, those evil things when they enter our mind, that God has given us a new mind, one that would be unpartial like God's, um, one that would be loving one that would be accepting because we, like God, are trying to accept people into the fold of our faith and we're trying to show love without partiality to those in the world, that they might come to experience this impartial faith. And so as Christians, we are set apart from the world in that we recognize and we repent of and we turn from those evil thoughts when they enter our mind. And so uh, John the Baptist, I often share this uh, passage, but John the ba- Baptist said, uh, bear fruit in keeping with repentance. And so part of that fruitful life is just repenting often and saying, yeah, these, these thoughts, these racial thoughts, these partial thoughts, they don't belong in my mind. You know, I'm, I'm, I am living for the mind of Christ. And so we recognize those things and we reject them. You know, in, in the Old Testament, um, there were two there were two racial groups that we see, you know, in the Bible, really. There were Jews and Gentiles. And, you know, it wasn't that, you know, 
that with the Jews, they really were called 